hang them in their day two. Um, many of you will be sitting in your classrooms or lecture theatres or halls and have no idea what you want to do in 10 years time. Some of you might have strong opinions on what you want to do in 10 years time, but statistics show that most of you uh, won't and you're not alone. At 16, I had a love of technology, but I never dreamt of being a director of cybersecurity or, an, or, or being associated to education in any way. Um, my role is probably something which amuses some of my former teachers who would be terribly shocked to find out what I do. I did have dreams when I was at your age. I thought I want to be a pilot. I want to play rugby for Newcastle Falcons. I want to be a programmer and I want to work in sound and audio. And the comp none of those really sort of came to, to fruition in the, in the truest sense. I've did a little bit of that. I, I worked for quite a while in programming, wasn't quite happy. And but I started to look across my past in my early 20s and realized actually there was a common denominator across everything I've done. And it was tech um, and all of the skills I'd learned along the journey at your age to early 20s um, sort of came, came together and I realized cyber was a sector for me. You know, my dream of being a pilot taught me to risk assess and to plan ahead and to strategize. Rugby uh, and sport taught me leadership and resilience. Programming showed me how to use computational thinking skills, which I still use every day. And audio gave me the ability to think forensically and to analyze things in a very different light. My sector now is computing and cyber. From all of that, from all of those things where that young 15 year old and 16 year old in the classroom, I thought I was going to play rugby, I was going, I was going to be a pilot, actually found myself in a very different position and, and I'm loving my career. And over the next five to 10 years of your lives, many people will discuss the opportunities available to you uh, from various career paths, many of which are likely to be STEM. In fact, if in your shoes now, as a young person with the right attitudes and interests, you'll find that tomorrow's UK job market is incredibly exciting and full of opportunity, especially for us within cyber, because without sounding too much like Lord Kitchener, your country needs you, and cyber security in particular needs you, because we've got two key problems. Firstly, we have a shortfall, um, and without a talented and diverse pipeline of young cyber security specialists, we simply cannot guarantee the future safety and prosperity of the United Kingdom. We've seen this week quite serious cyber attacks on hospitals, uh, which have forced them to close, cancel operations in London. We've seen serious attacks on schools, banking, entertainment, gaming and key infrastructure. In fact, as a professional in that trade and the professionals that I'll speak to you later, I think between us we'd be really struggling to name a sector or an organization that hasn't encountered a cyber attack. And it's the role then of a cyber specialist to protect and defend our ability to live and work safely in the UK. Whether it's defending infrastructure like water and power, or protecting our data and allowing businesses and education to succeed, the role is critical and we need you in that future job. Sadly, at the moment, we are about 14,000 people a year short. So every year, the estimate is that we have 14,000 people missing to fill jobs in the UK. That is something we need to rectify and the government have a full strategy laid out and part of that is the Cyber First programme. Interestingly, that isn't, we aren't alone. Across Europe, they have the same issue in the United States to do too. And a career in cyber often allows you to travel the world and to experience um, very different things and with very different companies. Some of the companies we have with us today have international companies. We have HSBC, we have Microsoft, we have NetDefense. So they've all come from various points. We have local companies too. Matter of factly, there's a great opportunity here for you and a sector that's crying out for you too. You know, the sector has poor gender diversity, although that's steadily improving. And we've got some really influential uh, female speakers on today who've done wonders in their career. And we're very proud to have them in, as part of our panel. But we need to get better. So we're looking for as many people as possible. And it's such a unique opportunity. I think a lot of our cyber speakers still will tell you today that when they joined this industry, what they joined to do has changed dramatically. This is a job that changes day after day, year after year. And it's a chance to be stimulated all the way throughout your career. It's not one that's likely to go stale. It is one that's likely to challenge you. 
We can see already, if you look around you, the current landscapes in, in, in tech are changing dramatically. You know, a job now uh, will be very much focused on current cyber threats. In five years' time, that'll, that, that'll be something very different. We're seeing it already with the rapid emergence of AI. We're then seeing it with the future commercialization of quantum systems. So what you look at now will change dramatically. But what is there is a fantastic career with a UK average entrance salaries of £38,000. You know, after a few years, you're looking at an average of 76,000. And that's in 2024. Think to 28, 29, 30, when you guys have come out of degree apprenticeships in university, um, that, that will be a very different figure and the need will only grow. But as I said, that's challenge one. And there are two challenges. The second challenge, if you're sitting in your room and you're thinking, actually, this, I like cybersecurity, I'm interested, but a career isn't for me. We still need you. We need to develop you to be a cyber resilient person so that when you do go into your careers, regardless of your industry, whether you're a farmer or you're a pharmacist, we need you to have the skill set to protect yourself and your organization. We know uh, through cybersecurity that the biggest weakness is ourselves. We have terrible behaviors, bad habits, like setting terrible passwords or accidentally responding to phishing emails and not quite studying them or failing to secure our personal details, which you, we see more and more. And there's a lot of attacks on teenagers as we're seeing um, through social networks. So we need to educate you and help you throughout your career. That's our two problems. And if any of you ever help, you know, one of your older relatives to set up a device, you know how true they are. My, I always have, I'm always the technical support person. I always have been since I was your age uh, for my entire family. And every time I set up, one of my father's or mother's devices, I spend my whole time begging them to put a stronger password on, which they remind me they'll swiftly forget. So, you know, we have these quirks as humans that we need to develop to protect. And technology is evolving. You would have seen, you know, most of you all have phones now that use facial recognition, so biometrics rather than just uh, a six digit number. And we're doing our best in technology, but we need to make sure that still, human error is accounted for. So that's part of our program. You know, we know the two problems and Cyber First as a whole is there to support you all the way through your school. We, You know there's a destination you can get to. They are careers. They have fantastic opportunities, as our speakers will tell you today. But how are you going to get there? That's that's the question that I'm here to try and work with you on. It's my job and my team's job, like Sally and Sarah and Claire and Janine, who are here today, to help you reach that destination. And events like this, are, which are designed to inspire you, are the first step. Beyond that, it's vital that you keep working with the Cyber First program. And if you aren't in a Cyber First school, I hope that you do encourage your teachers to apply and look out for opportunities. We have a few things coming up for our year 12s. We have a Cyber First advanced competition that will be going over the summer, which will be an open platform where you log in and you'll learn four key skills. You look at open source intelligence, uh, penetration testing, uh, forensics, and a few other little quirks, and it ends with a capture the flag competition. Um, for our younger years, we also have uh, more events like this coming up and a few more online platforms that will be, be approaching um, and releasing next year. Alongside that, though, we want to help you get to university or through your degree apprenticeships. And we do have a, a bursary program that is available. Each year, we take 100 applicants and we give them £4,000 a year to go through university, as well as providing them a paid summer work placement at one of our 100 Cyber First partner organisations. So we're here to help you get to that destination. And we're really proud of the work we've done. In fact, several of the speakers today are people like you who've gone through the Cyber First program, they've got a bursary, they've gone to university, they've come out and they've landed a fantastic job, and now they're here to promote that what their experience. Some of them were with us uh, a few weeks back in Birmingham at our awards evening, and we were able to celebrate their achievements. They are really the fruits of our labour, and we're very, very excited to welcome them as well. And I do hope that you do enjoy today and that as you go through the next few years um, of your academic journey, that you do consider cybersecurity, that you do explore platforms like Try Hack Me, you know, Hack the Box, or get in touch with us or your teachers and see what we can do to support your development. There is 
such a wonderful opportunity here and such a great need from the United Kingdom that we do hope that we see you progressively over the next few years. Now, I'm going to hand back to Sally in a moment um, to introduce uh, the rest of the day. She, I know she has a question that she wants to put on screen and we'll give you a few moments um, just to prepare and, and to go through that. There'll be a QR code on screen to scan. We'll ask you this at the start of today and at the end of today's session as well. And it's one simple question, which is, have you ever considered a career in cybersecurity? Now, all we're looking to do here is to see if there's any progress and we have had any impact on you today. Um, and I hope we do. And I hope you have a, a great day and enjoy the speakers. Whether you're in or out, we'll be here with you all day. Thank you. Um, and Sally, th thank you very much. I'll let you present the Slido question. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, it is a bit of a small world. I've worked with Nick for quite a while and uh, I did not know that Nick used to want to be a pilot. That is uh, actually what I used to want to do when I was uh, 15, 16 as well. So uh, my background is not cyber. My background is uh, engineering, aeronautical and marine engineering. But I got into that job because I wanted to be a pilot. Um, I'm only five foot two. It turns out my arms were too short and I couldn't actually fit in the ejector seat. So my dreams of being a pilot were also dismayed at a young age. Um, and I went into engineering. Now, although I didn't work in a cyber specific job, what I saw over 25 years of working in that career is that cyber is everything. It's everywhere. There are no rules and no jobs, no companies now that do not have a cyber um, section in their organization. So whatever roles and interests you have, cyber is applicable to absolutely everything. And hopefully, as Nick said, what we've got today um, is quite a few varied speakers, some companies you might have heard of, other companies you might not have heard of. We've got some big companies, some smaller companies, but all of these roles are related to cyber. So hopefully, um, by the end of today, your answer to the question I'm going to ask you now might be slightly different. So what I would like you to do, um, if it is okay with the teachers, if the pupils have their phones with them, I'm going to put a, a slide up on the screen, which is going to have a QR code on it. Now, you guys might have used this before. This is called Slido. Um, so if you bear with me for one second, I will bring up the uh, Slido question that I have to ask you. So what I would like you to do you can see on the screen now there is a QR code on the left hand side. Um, I would like the pupils to answer this question for me. OK, so have you ever considered a career in cyber? Scan the QR code or you can go to Slido and you can put in the little code there. So what we're hoping to see um, is how many people would say yes, how many people would say no. So I do appreciate it might take you a little while to get your phones out. Um, teachers, I will also be sending round um, an email with a screenshot of this in the background uh, on the slides so that you can actually if you if your pupils haven't got their phones with them, you will get the chance to answer this a little bit later. Or oh, we've got some coming in 50 50. So some people have. So what Slido does as more and more people answer these questions, it puts it into uh, into a little percentage so I can see how many of you might or might not be thinking about a career in cyber. Now think about all of those good reasons there that uh, that Nick has given for going into jobs. Um, think about what I just said. I didn't work in a cyber specific role. Um, but I worked in lots and lots of different aeronautical and marine engineering companies um, and cyber was everywhere in those companies. 